we can maybe start by not just dispelling some myths, but providing some value right from the jump, because you're in rec- restaurant marketing like nobody's business. So I was curious, what's the number one mistake you see restaurant owners make when it comes to marketing, the biggest offender? Biggest offender is how I ended up with this ring on my finger. When I met my wife 26 years ago in college, I asked for her phone number the first time we really had an interaction. If you think about restaurants, what's the toughest thing to accomplish to get somebody to trust in that they drove to your place, they passed their go-to Mexican restaurant to try yours, walk in your door, have a great meal, great service, and the biggest disservice you could do is not find out who they are. And it becomes this very transactional thing. D- double click on that for the people that it's it's not quite click because I, I I you and I know where this is going. But like the explain a little bit. I had a question about your um your whole thesis on having a customer database, and so maybe like if it's not too much to ask to jump right into that. Let's do it. Keep going. Yeah. So I look at it from a standpoint that the the biggest asset you can have as a business is your database. It's my database that I used in 2008 when I launched my digital marketing company, helping restaurants on Facebook, was my customer list from 1999 when I sold radio advertising. Wow. I had it all in this program called ACT. I don't even know if ACT is still around, but I used ACT. I had it in there. I had their names, their phone numbers, their fax numbers, their email address, their websites, their birthdays. And when I started my company in 2008, when I got out of the boat and RV business, I used it to activate my business. And it went from here to here really fast. And so I look at a restaurant is that if I owned a restaurant, which in two years I will, we'll have a restaurant in two years about a mile from our property here where our headquarters is at so we can practice what we preach. But I would do whatever it took. Like you would have to leave with an injured knee and a baseball bat to it for you to get out of my restaurant without me knowing your name, your phone number, your birthday, your email, your anniversary, how often you've come to my restaurant. Are you brand new? Because at the end of the day, I call it uh, aim and expect. Most restaurants have hope and pray. I'd rather aim and expect. If I'm going to grow my business, I'd rather aim at a segment of my audience and expect an outcome. I would rather not just go, you know what, we're going to open up today. We're going to put a post on Facebook and you know the internet gods are going to put customers in our restaurant. It's almost like there's two facets to this that I'm I'm noticing as you're talking about this. There's one element that's like, the tools that you use and those change over time. You expressed one that you've used back in the nineties. And then, you know, like there's a a, a slew of like CRM style softwares uh, these days that people can pick up and use, but it's almost like you have to have the switch flick in your head to almost rethink how you approach work, you know, communicating and interacting with your guests at the foundational level. Have you kind of in your time speaking about this and educating people about the value of this, has there been anything that's like, Oh, this, I, once I say this, people really get it. And this, this is how we're going to get people to kind of like really convince themselves that this is going to be valuable for them. I, I haven't found the secret pill yet because <laughs> uh, here's what I run into. I run into, oh, people won't give me their information. That's, that's too much right, to ask. Or, right. Okay. Well, don't tell them, Hey, I'm going to give you a free Coke with nine entree purchases. <laughs> if you give me your name, give them something valuable, give them a free pizza. I can't do that. I can't give my food away. I'm like, so would you rather have Matt Platt come back 50 times or five? Well, 50. Well, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen by a premeditated marketing plan. That plan revolves around two opportunities. One, you hope and pray they see a Facebook post or an email, or not even an email, a Facebook post like that, or you have their information and you have their email and their cell phone and their birthday and their anniversary. And you know that Matt Platt is a first time customer or Matt Platt's never been or Matt Platt comes every week. And so when I have that conversation with them, the analogy that does get their attention is the dating one. I say, you know, I met my wife in college. I met her in the training room because my friend was hitting on her all the time. And she said, hey, will you tell Tom that you and I are dating? I'm like, yeah, okay, Tom, Christian, day, he left her alone. Well, then like a couple of days later, I saw her at study hall and I'm like, it's a good idea. We should probably date. And I say, what is your, what's your name? What's your phone number? What door were you in? We started dating. We then went on a bunch of dates. We got engaged three years later. We got married a year, two years after that. We had kids. Businesses try to skip the whole dating thing and try to have babies right away. Like, hey, I don't know who you are, but you're standing near my restaurant. Come in here and eat for the next 10 years. So whenever I talk about that analogy of 
you need to, in order to date your customers, you got to know who they are. And in order to progress that relationship deeper and deeper, you've got to know more about them. And I think that's a huge flaw is that everybody, they spend all this money. I had a restaurant the other day, they spent $1.5 million on their build out. Wow. Fanciest booths you've seen, these awesome tables. They got a gorgeous sign. Guess how much money and effort and plan they dedicated to acquiring customer data when the restaurant opens? Zero. In fact, the one owner was telling me they were on Word the night before the restaurant opened doing their menu. Oof. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't jive. So I, I think that it's, uh, you know, when they say you, you, you plan to fail or you fail to plan. Right. And I think the biggest problem in all of small business is that we've created transactions, is that everybody's a transaction. That's like when, when the pandemic hit, I had a batch of customers that did awesome, and I had a batch of customers that did average. The common denominator was these average ones were a transaction. This was one lady that owned eight locations, and she went to each one about every two months. This location over here, Brian Picard at Fatty Smokehouse in Moore, Oklahoma, he's at it every day. The customers that walk in, he knows their name, they know him. They have a relationship. And I think that's a huge element of it is, is the relationship and versus transactional. And I think the way you get away from transactional is by getting to know your customers. There's a piece that I, I heard, I'll, I'll call it maybe about a year ago, and you're the perf perfect person to, to riff on this with me. But I heard it, I heard this anecdote that was all marketing is, is consistent communication with people that you have established a relationship with which in in my mind was a complete flip from I coming up in the industry had always thought of marketing and sales as being almost like the same thing they Venn diagram in a bunch of different places um but I think that that really flipped it in my head of not thinking that every single piece of communication that you have with your customers has to be the hard sell it has yeah. to be the you know the kind of like hey you need to spend money in order to make this marketing effort that I've done as a quote unquote a success. But yeah. that, that's really in line with what you just outlined for everybody here. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny because tomorrow I, I'm, I'm flying to shoot some, uh, our TV show down in North Carolina. And I told my team, I was going to read the first printed copy of my book. That I, I haven't read it yet. I've read the manuscript. I wrote it. It's been a year and a half process. And I'm going to read it tomorrow. And, and somebody this morning, I was on a podcast said, bad part about reading your own book once it's done is you realize the stuff you left out. And one thing we left out of this book, which I literally am just uh, I'm beside myself on it, is an acronym that we use within our company. Our company is America's Best Restaurants. That's our media company. Uh, the acronym we use is ABR, America's Best Restaurants, ABR, but also Attract, Build, Retain. Got it. The, the three-step marketing plan for every restaurant. The book talks breaks it down deeper into five, but the three most basic elements or you have to attract attention, you have to build a database off that attention, and you have to find ways to retain that database, keep them coming back. And something you said there reminded me of a conversation about four years ago. I was talking to this guy named Peter Wiley. They have a brand called Hothead Burritos. And we were looking at the marketing that we were doing for them. And we have you know, Facebook Messenger and text and email and Facebook ads and Instagram and in-store marketing. And we had come up with a cumulative number of impressions that we were making per month per store. And we were looking at it and he said, Matt, that's the only number that matters to me. He said, because at the end of the day, if people are inter interacting with our marketing, email, text, Facebook, whatever, uh, or the in-store, if they're interacting with it, they're seeing our name. The more often they see our name, they'll eat more often. He said, so I look at it this way. If, you know, Justin sees our marketing somehow a hundred times a year, it's going to influence him to eat here X amount of times, let's say five times. So if he sees my marketing 500 times a year, it's going to increase his visits from five to 25. Right. So at the end of the day, all you got to do is attract attention. But the key element kind of goes in order for me is you can attract attention all you want, but it's going to cost you more money the more times you have to rent that audience. That's why I talk about building. That if you use Facebook, for example, and you market to people that like hothead burritos and they interact with the mechanism and the call to action in your ad, like, hey, comment below or click below for your next burrito free. Now you get their information. Now you can talk to them on your terms versus Facebook's. But then that last part is what you hit there is our retention strategy. So we have a team. Our company has four main teams, account management, then attraction, build, and retention. And Tanya heads up the, the retention team. 
And what we look at every month is we're going to talk to our four, our customers four times a month. We're going to talk to the customer database four times a month. The first week of the month is new customers. The second week of the month is frequent customers. The third week of the month is lost. And the fourth week of the month is everybody. But we also talk to them in a different manner every week. Like if you think about it, most companies, if you look at the average restaurant, let's say they have a database of 2,000 people, and let's say they're actually using it. That means 52 times a year, they're going to send 1,000 people this, a message. All of them get the same message. And all of them get it every week. And it's about me, 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 my restaurant, my menu, my this. You look at your database and break it down. That's not going to impress a new customer. That's not going to drive them into the restaurant. A frequent customer doesn't really care. They already come to your restaurant. And so I like to tell our customers, that you know what? 60% of the time you talk to your customers on Facebook, text, and email, and Instagram, and YouTube, and Snapchat, and TikTok, and LinkedIn should be about them. You know, uh, a good example is Mother's Day. You know, it's one that always sticks in my head because it was, I, it just seen it really worked well. It was back in April. Uh, we had a lot of clients that did it, but this one client that I happened to be going to see, I watched theirs really close. And I was going to shoot a podcast with them, and they had a Mother's Day post that went up, and it talked about, we want to know your your memory of you and mom. Drop it below in the comments, a picture and something that reminds you of your mom. And then we had an email to text that went out about it. None of this said eat at the restaurant on Mother's Day. Right. None of this said here's an offer, a reservation. It literally just said go to Facebook. The email said go, click below to go to Facebook and tell us a memory of your mom. And it had that one. I want to say it's like 240 people had commented, and these weren't just like Jeez. my mom's awesome. It was here's a picture of me and mom at the X Y Z festival. We did this, this, and this. She's so special to me. Here's what she did. When people engage at that level, that's priceless. And what I tell clients, I just told somebody this morning, a customer called me and said, hey, asking advice. They got a restaurant that's struggling. I said, you need to impact 600 people a year at a deep level. And they said, 600, what do you mean? I said, what? We need tens of thousands. I go, no, because if you can literally get a database of, let's say, three to 4,000 people and you can have deeper relationships with 20 to 30 percent of them, all you've got to do is convince about five to 600 people more a month to come in. And if you can find those 500 people that love your product, love you, love what you stand for. 500 more visits a month at, let's say, 20 bucks a pop, do the math. It's $10,000 in incremental sales, which is about $7,000 in incremental profit at 12 months a year is your salary.